right, so I've been pretty unhappy with the footage that I've been getting so far of grafting. Um, I've done probably four batches now of successful grafts. They weren't like, you know, 100% successful or anything. I, you know, I'd put in 30 grafts and get maybe, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 each time. Um, but they've been good queens. They've been well fed so far. Um, so right now those queens are currently in, in mating nukes that I've made. Uh, I just am not too happy with the footage that I've gotten, so I'm going to try to go through the whole process of what I've learned so far for the grafting. And uh, I'm not going to try to explain exactly how to do it because I'm not going to act as though I'm a teacher on something I'm new at doing. I'm just going to show what I'm doing, um, you know, because it's not really, like I said, it's not my business to try to teach you as someone who hasn't done this before. Some of the other things I've done, swarm catching, all that, like whatever, I can probably say I can teach that because I've done it for a few years and it, it's, you know, makes great sense to me. This, I'm still trying to grasp fully and um, it is somewhat difficult, but I think I, I have the general process down. I think I just need to get better at um, planning and making sure that I have the right size larva and all that. Um, so let's see how it goes. So quick overview of what's going on. This hive right here, this is my queenless hive. This will be the starter hive for my grafts. I'm going to take grafts off of this hive here because it's a, uh, it's a bit of an Italian breed. It's a combo of uh, Italian with some feral genetics of Texas. So they're really good bees, but they're also well behaved. Um, so I'm going to graft off of those because I know that there should be some good larvae in there that are ready. So let's go ahead and get started here. See how quiet it is it's like i open up this hive and they're just like whatever they keep on working um they're not all that fast moving i'm all about the fast moving crazy feral bees until they're actually super africanized and they follow you a long ways it's one thing if they're in my face right here but if they follow me to my house i'm not too happy with it and these if i turn and like walk away they pretty much leave me alone um so let's find a frame in here that would be good for graphics and when I do, I'm going to go to my Jeep, do my graphs, and then they'll end up going in this starter hive here. So for now, I'm going to close the hive up. And then what you can do is you can kind of smoke the additional bees that are on there. You can smoke them off, or you can brush them off. I have a brush at my vehicle. I'll probably do that here in a second. So far, I've only been grafting in my Jeep. I really uh, haven't done much grafting anywhere else. Today, I'm gonna try to do 45. Uh, so what I do is I basically take my frame that I'll be grafting from. I always kind of have my, my area set up in my passenger seat with all the stuff that I need. Uh, that being a brush. So I usually go ahead and brush off the bees that I, that I can get here. And then once I get most of them, I go ahead and just set them in the, in the vehicle carefully. And I do that just so I don't have bees all over me while I'm like crafting. But, and also in addition to that, the wind out here has been kind of crazy and I really don't want the larva to dry out. So it's always nice and hot and humid in my Jeep. Um, so I typically jump in there, do my grafts real quick in the driver's seat and hop right back out, go throw them in the starter hive come back, grab the frame that I basically grafted from, go take them back to their hive. Because in my mind, it's more important to go ahead and get the grafts in first. So I go take the grafts first, come back for the frame uh, that goes back in the original hive, and then take them back. And then pretty much like I'm good to go for 48 hours. So let's do our grafts. I've got a headlamp that I'll put on so I can see down into the cells. Okay, so what I like to do, and I wish that I could make this easier to see, but what I like to do is I'll go ahead and take off the first cell bar that I'm going to graft, and I'll hold it here in my hand while I have my my frame that I'm grafting from. Whoops. The frame that I'm grafting from, I'm going to sit in my lap. So it's going to sit here to where I can shine my light down into it and do my grafts right into the cell bar that I'll be holding with my other hand. Now... 
Uh, as soon as I get done with this one, I'll put it back um, on, the, on the frame that holds the cell bars. I'll cover it with a damp rag. And once I get all of the cell bars done, immediately go take it out there into the starter hive. So let's go ahead and get started so I don't sit here forever talking. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a brand new grafting tool. Um, I am gonna crack the windows because it's uh, blazing in here. Um, maybe some of these bees will get out. So I basically have the frame in my lap. I've got my cell bar in my hand and you're going to go ahead and start grafting your tiniest little larva that you can find. Um, like I said, I'm not going to really show too much detail there. You can find that in other videos. I'm just going to go ahead and do it and show that I finally learned how to do it after having it fail probably three or four times before I actually finally had success and, um, you know, queens that got accepted. So here we go. So once you get started, it takes a minute, but once you kind of get going, it starts going a lot quicker. And as you can see, you'll probably end up with like random nurse, random nurse bees that are hatching out and crawling all over you during this process. Um, so there's that. Okay, so that's it for the first cell bar. So what I'll do is set it here in the seat next to me. I'll take my damp rag and go ahead and cover it. Now, I will grab out my second one. Go ahead and pop it out of your cell bar frame. Set your cell bar frame back down. You've got your cell bar back in your hand and you get started grafting another cell bar. Okay, cell bar number two is now finished. So you'll set this one next to the other and go ahead and cover it with the towel. And then depending on how many you're doing, depends on when you're done, obviously. Um, but I've got one more that I'm gonna knock out just to try to get some extras here. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh my gosh, it's hot. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now you'll take your uh, frame that you've been grafting from, go ahead and set it out of the way because it can, it can wait a little bit longer, I feel like, to go in the hive. All right, so then go ahead and carefully cover your cells with a damp towel. I'm going to set this temporarily down while I get my thing on because these sound like they're not too happy outside. Oh my gosh, it's so much better out here. All right, so you get all suited back up and of course the bees are immediately on me. So, you'll go ahead and you'll grab your cell bar, just like this. You'll carefully set it down. Let me go get my smoker real quick. Okay, so you'll go ahead and you'll take your freshly, uh, your fresh grass and you'll put them down into the starter hive. Just like that. And pretty much close them up. I didn't film me opening this hive up, but so you put them in there and they'll make those grafts and in about 48 hours, I'll go take them to the finisher hive where the finisher will cap them off and close them up, which means that they won't be fed any longer at that point. Um, and so then I can go ahead and move them into my incubator. So it's been 48 hours since I put those grafts in, those 45 grafts. So now it's time to get in there and check and see how many were accepted and then they're going to need to be taken over to the, uh, the finisher hive.
Uh, this is the most success I've had so far. I've got like over 30 that were uh, successful. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, close these girls back up. And now I need to go over and put these in my finisher hive. So let's go do that. So here we are at the finisher hive. I need to get this cell bar down into here so they can go ahead and finish these up. So what I do is I go ahead and just set it carefully down off to the side. I usually don't try to waste much time with this hive. I usually just get right into it. I'll go ahead and break it open right at the middle or right at the uh, starter box. Okay, so I have an empty frame in here, a foundation. I'm gonna take that out and then put my graphs down inside. Okay, so I've created a gap in here. Now you'll take your graphs. Just go ahead and put them down carefully into the hive. Now this hive will feed those queen cells and they'll cap them off to where they'll be ready to take to my incubator. Alright, so they're in there and now I just need to check the queen calendar and see when they'll be capped. It'll be like, uh, it looks like I think five days from now these will be capped and they'll go into my incubator. And this time it looks like I have about 30 of them. So today's the day I'm removing my capped queen cells out of the finisher hive and they'll be taken over into my incubator. I'm going to take them out individually and let them hatch in the incubator. Um, so I usually just try to take off this top box and get right into it. I don't like wasting time. I just get in there, pull them out and close it back up. So let's go ahead and get that done. I have quite a few fully capped queen cells here that are ready to be put in the incubator. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and set these off to the side and get ready to take them to the I only had six out of 45 that were not accepted. This is for sure my biggest uh, batch so far. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm getting a little bit better at this. So, uh, I'm now gonna go take these out of here and put them in the incubator where they'll remain until they hatch. So. I'm pretty happy with that. This is my uh, most acceptance so far. Looks pretty good. Okay, so here we are at my incubator. Um, I've got the JZBZ cell bars there with the queen cell protectors and I have here my uh, my graphs so I'm gonna go ahead and take these out and put them into these these uh, uh, cell protectors all right so one by one I'm gonna carefully take each one of these cells off of the bar they're kind of glued in with propolis so you're gonna take your cell Put it down inside the uh, JZBZ queen protector, queen cell protector, and then just go down and get your, your next one. So it looks like I've got f uh, 39 on this batch. Pretty good batch. Okay, so I've put my uh, 39 queen cells into my incubator. Um, so here in about seven days, I'll be checking them, and they'll be, well, that's when they'll be hatching. It's in seven days, and I'll put them in a queen cage with a uh, candy plug and then I'll be able to add them to a nuke. So I have a nice vigorous queen that I just uh, just marked letting the paint dry. She's not liking me, but she's real nice looking. I've got two that have hatched right here, and I just marked them 
I uh, need to get them put in a candy cage here soon with some attendants and get them fed. And meanwhile, I've got this one that she's chewed open herself, but she's just not quite coming out yet. And then these five are supposed to hatch today. So I get stung quite a bit, but earlier I got stung in my eyebrow. And usually the swelling goes down pretty quick. Um, but this one being so close to my eyes, like I'm just like having a hard time. If this was like three years ago and I got stung in my eyebrow, I'd be like completely swollen shut. You wouldn't be able to see my eyes at all. Um, it's just like so puffy in the corner of my eyes, so puffy. Okay, so today I'm basically going to be coming out here. First of all, I've got like, I have 39 queens that are hatching today and I think already there's been about 20 of them that have hatched. So I'm coming out here to the bee yard to um, put attendants into those cages and I have a couple of nukes that basically need queens that I made a couple days ago. There's any of these nukes that have a rock, you can't even quite see it. Any nuke that has a rock on the lid <clears throat> needs a queen. Or the queen that's in there is subpar, maybe not mated correctly. So there's like one, two, three, four, I can't, there we go. Anyway, there's a couple of nukes here. Some of these are mated, some are not. Uh, I will stick queens in any that don't have a good queen and we'll go from there, kind of see how many of them end up coming out mated. So here they are, here's the current ones that have hatched. I actually just counted and I have 21 more that are hatching today. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with all of them? So I put them up for sale. I'm probably only gonna use maybe 10 or 15 or so of this batch and then I am done for a while. I may make one more batch this year, but I already broke down my, uh, my starter finisher hive a bit. So I'd have to rebuild all that if I wanted to make another batch. And I think I'm pretty satisfied with where I'm at for this year. So I think I'll focus on making sure that what I do have um, does well, survives, is you know, just doing well overall. So, uh, because so far I have about 30 hives and 30 is a lot of maintenance I'm, I'm learning. So um, anyway, I've got these queens. I'm going to go ahead and get them um, some attendant bees, some, some attendants in here so they can survive a little longer and then they'll get added to whatever hive I can add them to or they'll be available for sale within the next they're available right now, but they'll be okay for the next couple of days or so. All right, so what I'm doing is taking nurse bees and going to put them in each one of these cages. Uh, if I need to get a frame of brood, I've got some tweezers that I use. Here's my tweezers. So I basically am just gonna pick bees and put them into these cages here. This is a brood frame. So what I'm gonna do is basically just try to uh, set it down carefully and pick bees off of it one by one because these are young bees. Um, these will be the ones that are going to be most suited to feed the queens that are in the cages. So carefully, I don't see the queen anywhere. Yeah, I think we're good. So I'm going to carefully just kind of set them down. Um, these grafts are actually from this hive. And this is a very calm, this is a VSH Italian hive that's uh, kind of a mutt. They were, they're a mutt here. So they're kind of like partially VSH Italian and then otherwise they're, they're mutt bees. So the virgins that I made will be even further into the, the mutt genetics, um, but they've always been really well behaved, really good bees, so uh, should be all good. Like I have, I didn't even smoke them just now, getting into that box. So what I do, go ahead and take these one by one. These are little JZBZ queen uh, cages, which I already went ahead and put uh, candy in. It's a homemade just fondant with honey and powdered sugar. Uh, so because I'm wearing gloves, I usually use the tweezers to pop up this little, oh, queen's trying to get out, uh, pop up this little lid that's kind of on the side of the cage, or on the top of the cage, and I cover it up briefly while I basically take bees one by one and put them in this cage. So I'll put about four or five uh, nurse bees in with the queen and then I'll move on to the next one. Sometimes they get away, sometimes they sting my glove. You just have to grab them just right carefully on their, uh, on their abdomen. Or you can grab, see that one I didn't quite get in there. You can grab their legs, but could cause problems, could rip them off. All 
right, so I've got about four or five bees in here now with this queen. I did not mark these because I just didn't care to mark them. Um, so they'll chew through this candy fondant right here. Once they're added to a hive, these bees will chew that direction. And then uh, the, the bees that are in the hive that they're added to will go that direction. It takes about two or three days and they'll release that queen into the hive. And then she will go out and do her mating flights and she'll come back. Ultimately, if you're lucky, she'll come back mated and find her way back to that same hive and you'll have yourself a new beehive. So I'll go ahead. I'm gonna set my finished ones on the back side of this row. And then I just grab another one and do the same thing. Probably gonna be here for a bit. This is gonna take a good while. I have literally not even smoked these bees one time. And they're just, I can sit there and do this and they kind of send the occasional bee at me, but for the most part, they are so, so calm compared to most of my feral bees. Honestly, they're a little bit boring for me, but like if you're in a neighborhood and there's a house like right here, this is like, this is the kind of beehive you need. These other bees that I have, like when I get into them, you can, you can hear it. You can, you know about it. Not really good neighborhood bees. So you pop it open, gently grab a bee on its side like so, run it inside. Usually, there we go, one, there's two, there's three, oop, oop, oop. there's four, and there's five. Go ahead and close it. And now these queens will be way better fed. Now that they have nurse bees in there, it'll allow them to live a little bit longer in case it takes a few days for someone to decide to put them in a hive. Uh, I will be using some of these today to put in some nukes. Uh, let's see, I'll probably use anywhere from five to 10 and then the rest of them will all be for sale. I think I have 39 that are hatching today. So I'm gonna go ahead and go put these back for now. Go see how many more have hatched, and then I will also go ahead and close this hive up. I have 18, 18 queens here that are ready for sale. Um, and I have another 22 that are gonna be hatching here today. So I've got a lot of work to do today. So I haven't shown much of this quite yet, but this is my new mating nuke yard. So all of these nukes are splits that I basically made that were queenless and they became mating nukes because what I do is I take my virgin queens that have hatched and I will put them inside those nukes so they can go out and become mated and come back and end up being the new queen for each one of these hives. So um, the ones that have the rock on top right now need a queen. I, I basically made those splits and they do definitely need a queen. The ones that do not have a rock are actually mated and are a good viable hive. Um, so it's about half and half right now, like two there that are good and mated, two there that are mated, one that's not, one that is, one that's not, one that is, one that's not, one that is. So uh, I just need to get some queens into these splits that don't have a good queen right now and just kind of leave them alone for a few weeks. I think I may even have some in the bee yard over there I might need to add some to, so I'll get into them and see what's necessary and show you all the process. Okay, so I'll need to get into each one of these nukes that doesn't have a queen and add one to each. Just make sure that, uh, make sure their population is good enough. If they, if they don't have enough bees, I either need to add bees to that box or I may have to just combine them with another. Uh, so let's get in there and see what's going on in each one of these. Okay, so there's 
just a lot of brood in here. Uh, not a lot of bees yet, but there will be. So I'm going to give them a queen. I'm gonna give them a queen. Here they go, here's the queen. Say hello, everyone. Here's your future mom. Here's your, I guess, I guess this is like everyone's stepmom. Everyone that's in here, because this isn't their actual mom. This is like the, these are like the babysitters that are gonna babysit the mom in order for her to have her new babies, if that makes any sense. So these are like, this is like her, but their bonus mom. And then once she gets pregnant, she'll end up having babies of her own. And then these babies will all be dead. Happy quick lifestyle, life cycle in the beehive. Lips, uh, new lid. All right, rock goes back. And now we shift gears to that purple fella. These also really suck. These are mean bees. Look at this. Just take a queen. Stick her right here. cleanless starter hive that I broke pretty much broke down into one nuke so they're gonna get a new queen or a, a queen of their own I should say see there's quite a bit of bees in here oh yeah good good bit of bees in here that's great so this should make a nice split go ahead and take your queen I don't need to look in there because they didn't have larvae to begin with they were pretty like they were pretty expired um, take your queen, shove them down in there. They may stay right there or she may fall further, it doesn't really matter. And close them up. And on to the next. Okay, so this time I got stung really bad. I got stung right on my eyelid. It's been like maybe two hours and it's like, I'm like unable to open my eye at this point. So, um, it happens sometimes, you know, so, uh, they got me good. Don't ever take off your, your stuff early. I, I needed to like do something with my head or my hair or itch something. And I took off my thing early and I got stung right in my eyelid. Um, so don't do that because I can only see out of one eye right now. Also, it just really hurt. Like, it always hurts really bad to get stung in the tip of your nose. Um, this was like, instead of the burning that comes from the tip of your nose, this was just straight, like, searing. Almost felt like I had, like, acid in my eye. Felt like I poured something on my face. Look, I'm gonna end up getting stung again. Oh, boy. Anyway, it didn't feel good. Um... I usually don't swell up, but whenever it's stuff like extremities, like your fingers, or if it's something like your eyelid, it's just like, there. it's gonna swell. And it's probably gonna be swollen for a few hours, if not for the whole day. So anyway, that's what I'm up against today. I only get one eye for the rest of the uh, evening. Right. 
for the first time ever, for the first time ever, I basically have my own nukes and have my own queens in them that have actually come back mated. And the resulting brood pattern is right here. We've got, uh, this is definitely a mated queen. This is one of my graphs that I, that I made this year. So for the first time ever, I've made my own queens, which have officially gotten mated and are actually laying and they're looking pretty good. All right, so today I'm gonna to take any of my nukes that are mated uh, and, and maybe expanding and looking like they're, they're too packed in their nuke box. I'm gonna put them in uh, 10 frame boxes today and uh, check any other hives that maybe I've added a virgin queen to recently and I'm gonna check and see if they've become mated and kind of just go from there. All right, so I've got the bed of the truck loaded up with bottom boards, boxes with frames. I need to go grab a bunch of lids now. Uh, these are gonna be what my new nukes are gonna go into. Okay, so this, today should be the last of the day of me switching out my nukes, putting them into 10 frame boxes. Um, so I'm gonna get 10 frames set up here. I've already done a couple of them that have been mated and they're growing pretty quickly. Uh, some of them, as you can see, did not work out. Um, so the ones that did, this one did, it just happens to have a bunch of junk on the lid. Uh, all of these, I think I've got like six over here and I think another two over there. Uh, that I'll be putting into 10 frame boxes so these uh, so these girls can expand and hopefully be my new hives for next year. So I'm taking these bottom boards. I just painted these yesterday. They came as uh, basically unpainted wood, which I swear I remember my order being that they were supposed to be painted. But anyway, got them painted and uh, I'm setting them up over here. Uh, each one of these nukes is going to be put onto a 10 frame box. So I'm setting up my bottom boards right now where I have room to, and then uh, I'm gonna set 10 frame boxes on them and go ahead and get everything switched over into these so they can begin to expand and become some good hives for next year. I think I've decided I really wanna focus on honey next year, so what bees I do decide to split, those will just be my split bees. So like I might split all of these, but then leave all of those for honey and all of those bees over there for honey. I don't really know yet. Uh, but now that I have extra bees, I'm going to keep them and try to get them built up to where I have bees to basically split, make splits with next year, and maybe even sell some bees next year would be really nice. I'm going to do a different color on this one just so these boxes don't all look completely the same and end up getting drafting or whatever it's called, drifting I guess is what it's called, where a lot of bees show up to the, the box on the end, but they don't really make it to the rest. So I like having multicolored boxes that they can really recognize. Um, some might say the red, they can't see it very well, but it's, I kind of just did it because that's what paint I had. So let me go ahead and get these frames out of here. These are brand new frames that do not have a starter strip or foundation. Uh, so I actually don't really want to use these. I don't know why I brought these over here. Um, or I, I, need, I just need to go get some foundation and stick in there. Um, but I have other frames for now. I'm going to put these frames in here because they already have foundation on them. So I'll just do it like that. And then this next hive will transfer right over into this box. So in case you've never done this before, this is pretty much what this looks like. I've shaken all the bees kind of into the air that were in the box. And then I put all the other frames of bees into the box. So what you have is a little bit of confusion. There's kind of some bees flying around all over the place, um, but this is normal. This is all good. They're not swarming. They're not doing anything weird. They're just trying to find where the heck is their home because their home actually was right here. So they're kind of like, what the heck? It's not there anymore. Like, let's check this one. Maybe it smells like our mom. And so sure enough, they start realizing, I guess this is our new entrance hole. Even though I do have the lid off of it right now, it's kind of giving them the chance to, they can go in either, they can go in the top or they can go in right here. Um, they can just do that while you're working. In the meantime, you can go ahead and grab your lid, your inner cover and your lid. Go ahead and get those put on. So you'll take your inner cover
And just like your lid. And now again, we have a brand new colony. I'll put those frames away eventually because they need, they just need foundation on them. Um, so I've got this brand new colony and now this is my second brand new colony of today. So next up is this one right here is gonna get put into a tin frame. I have already done this one because they were building up really quick. And then I have, so I've got one, two, three more over here to do, four more over here to do. Got this one over here too. So let's go ahead and get into it. We do have a little bit of fanning going on where the bees will land and realize this is their new home and they'll fan it saying, this is where to go, come, come hither. So everything is looking good. They're all landing and going in pretty much like normal. It's only been like three or four minutes since I did it. Um, the bigger the colony is, the more amount of bees that you'll see in the air, but it's basically the same concept. You just do it and then you kind of walk away and they'll figure it out. Forgot to shake the bees in. You can always do it like that too. Right onto the inner cover and then take their stuff away. nice little beeswax coating on this lid because I left a piece of comb on here and look the actual beeswax came out of it and the sun bleached it it's not even quite so yellow anymore right here some nice good wax so this lid will last a while Okay, so it has been a while since I filmed those videos. It is now July 25th, and uh, this, you know, me setting up these nukes, that was all filmed back in about June 25th is when I got all these put together. 
So all of my new, uh, what was nukes, they're now 10 frame boxes. They're all mated and looking good. So they're all doing their thing. And this is my new bee yard. My other bee yard, I've got the one through the woods over there and another through the woods back that direction. Uh, so these were the ones that were all the nukes. These are the ones that came from my grafted queens and they're all doing good. Um, other than the fact that we're in an extreme drought right now, it's real hot and nasty, like 105 degrees. There's really not much out there for them. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of waiting for some rain, hopefully. Um, but other than that, there's really hasn't been, there hasn't been anything else going on. Uh, I've been extremely busy, have not posted recently, but I am going to start kind of posting some of the videos that I've filmed. I've just been working a lot and I just have not gotten around to editing. Uh, but just wanted to go ahead and get this video out there, show everyone that I am doing good. Everything is going good out here and I uh, hope you're all doing good as well. We just had a nice little rain a little bit ago and now the sun is coming back out. So everyone is flying around all happy, stretching their wings. Quite busy over here. So today is August 29th and there is actually a ton of pollen going in. Just about every one of these girls has pollen going in the hive. And they're very busy, they have a lot to do. We've got We've got blooms going on right now from a couple different trees. Uh, we had we had rain recently, and like literally every single one of these hives is bringing in pollen right now. Loads of it. So everything is looking good so far, and these are all my new hives. These are the ones that I made this year out of queens that I grafted, and they're all doing so good. Here's my tree colony. And here in a second, you'll see one come in with pollen. There's one right there. It seems like they're actually using the end over here more as an entrance now than they were. You can see that all the bees that are going in pretty much have pollen. They just don't do a whole lot at this entrance anymore. And we've got these hives are all doing good. And we've got these hives. They are also all bringing in pollen and looking good. Yeah. 